correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like it's a turn off for a woman when she sees a dude that's like, bro, I'm telling you, I'm with you because of you. Like, stop mm. trying to, like, be so, you know, put me like... Like, trying to reassure him exactly, that I'm with you. Like, you know, I'm with you and I'm with you. At it's the end of the day, you said, yeah. like, you know, I'm going home with you. So it's like, yeah, like, even though I'm not going in a room full of guys looking for that attention, but if it's given to me, don't be mad. Be proud that yeah. you have that by your side. So you also have to ask yourself, what did I do to make my partner feel like I, that there's a potential for me to meet somebody or like to engage in a deeper level with somebody else? Did I do something that, that made you feel this way? Because no. like mm. if you have a really solid foundation, there's no way mm -hmm. that like coming into a room looking a certain way, mm -hmm. like, that, that should not deter anything from the relationship. Mm -hmm. can, can I ask you, because that's, I, that's actually a really good point. How, is, is that a pretty common thing in how you see it? Like, say your, your man's, like, not confident. How much of that is, the way you see it, is did I do something, or is that just, that's a, that's a him problem? He was already that way. So, like, as a female, do you think, like, do you do that a lot, where you're like, oh, what did I do? Or I must have done something. I think so. I think women really take the blame a lot. Mm. And, uh, and that for some reason, the word narcissist is so popular among women's conversations. Because why is it my fault that you don't feel safe enough with me? Mm. So, so insecure men definitely feed into a woman's insecurities as well. Everything bleeds wow. into your yeah. partner. It's so tough. Because life experience, right? If, if in the past you had somebody just come and take your girlfriend or whatever away from you. It's like, oh, now I got to protect, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. my relationship. So you walk in anywhere with your beautiful girlfriend, wife, whatever it is. It's like, somebody has the opportunity to go about taking my wife today mm -hmm. or my girlfriend today. Yeah. So that, then you do start, you know, displaying that possessiveness, if you will. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's super tough. I don't know why, but some people really like that. Some women really and, like to be. And that's the thing. That's like, yeah. that's mine, don't look. But right. I mean, in, in <laughs> your marriage, if or in your relationship, if somebody was to come up and disrespect you, would you not expect for your partner to go about defending you, mm. in a sense? Take that glove off and I feel like I would know. just <laughs> exactly. be like, what's up? You no, know? but in the event that they don't say Damn, that would be like, like oh, okay, oh, sit down, I got this. What's up, my G? What's up? <laughs> exactly. but, I think it's this acting up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, in the event that they don't say anything, like, it, it's just the simple statement, like, hey, you know, that's, that's my wife, that's my girlfriend, whatever. If they don't say anything, now you're going to end up potentially looking at that person, like, but why didn't you say anything? Mm. Yeah, because you, you would know. do it for your child. Exactly. You know, so it's a double-edged sword. If I say something, I'm wrong. If I don't say anything, I'm wrong. So yes. what do I do? You know. I think it's also societal norms now for men to be quieter and not stand up for themselves or their families. Because mm -hmm. we've been shutting them down since 2017 when the Me Too movement came by. It's like men have definitely been called out, but... Now we have to call them back in. Hey, don't forget you're still a man. Yeah. Okay, we showed you. Mm. Get back up there. Mm. Some, some women like their honor defended because, it's, you know, I think any person would like that. Like if I was walking down the street and my wife defended me, I'd be like, yeah, cool. <laughs> exactly. I feel special. Kick her right? ass, Ashley. Exactly. Kick her ass. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> Kick his ass. Kick his ass. You got this, Ashley. babe, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, Let me hold your hair back. A lot of it, like like you were saying, is societal, right? And and the whole possessive thing, because how men can be possessive, women can also be possessive. Mm -hmm. Like you know, and and you know, it's. You've seen it in the movies, the crazy ex-girlfriend or whatever, right? Or crazy ex-boyfriend. But a lot of it also has to do with, look how much cheating, disloyalty, dishonesty there is in society now. Mm. I say this very often. There is a lot of single married people in the city. Mm. Ooh. Yeah, that, that's I love that. Yeah. 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 Like you always hear about, Where? you know, like <laughs> <laughs> when for Not research, money, for more research, yeah, for, just like stay away from these neighborhoods. If you guys <laughs> notice, they they kind of like made it normal to say, "Oh, your side piece." I'm like, what? Mm. That's like considered like you guys coined. You mean the person you're being disloyal with? Mm. Right? You don't mean my gun, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, that's the side piece. And when I heard that, I said. Oh, okay, cool. So we're like normalizing this. Like adultery is cool now, right? Well, I think I think it's, you know part of what you're saying too is like look at look at what's on TV. 
like not a knock on people like whatever shows you like to watch like i, I really don't care but there's things that I'll, I'll see like on commercials if or, or we open up netflix or whatever and and it's like the, these dating games, and they, they made it into a game, mm -hmm. right? And I get it. Like, it's good television. It's fun to watch for some people. Yeah. But it's like they've ta taken dating, which is supposed to be like a pre-marriage, and they've made it a game. Mm -hmm. You date this person, then you date this person, you date this person. And it's supposed to be a quick, 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 quick thing. And it's almost like it, you could see that in this next generation where they're just going through relationships quickly mm -hmm. and they're like once the physical stuff is over then it's like okay next person next person next person and it's i mean look at apps apps are mm -hmm. making it really easy too right and i'm not i'm not knocking any of those because i know people that got married from <laughs> he's like whoa 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 i'm about to meet be very you. careful yeah. there. <laughs> but what i'm wow. saying yeah <laughs> what i'm saying though it's it's created like this faster speed yeah. And it's like, when do we take the time to, hey, we're in a relationship, let's sit, let's work through this problem, other yeah. than switch and go to the next one. See. So I guess what characteristics do women, I guess you can't speak for all, but what characteristics have to be displayed on like that first interaction for you? For me mm. personally is what are, your, what are your goals? What are you looking to accomplish in the future? But um, sorry, David, I want to touch on your message about like what you see in the world right now. And I was going to say that like you just you really have to get rid of social media. If you want to be a man of God, just mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know you post for yourself like it's just recent. Yeah, <laughs> for my music. But, my uh, <laughs> like certain women are so, so, you know, jealous and they would look at everything that you like, everything that you post. They would go through your Explorer page. Mm. So just just get rid of it completely. But you've never done that. I'm not the jealous type. I'm very secure of myself. Good. Hey, hey, Good. Let's choose hey here we go. <laughs> I love Absolutely. That. I, love that. I know you're very secure, so you see the insecurities in men very quickly, I'm assuming. Do you not? Usually they tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it's a little really? funny because they kind of like. Open up to Yeah. I, I can't even think of it an example because, like, like I'm on the spot, but um, yeah. It, it, it's like. You, when you're nervous, you can't really control yourself. Like, I'm gonna start blabbering because I'm, I'm nervous meeting you guys for the first time. So a lot of men are like that. It's okay, that it happens. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of men are like that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like they tell you, well, here's my problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's usually good. they tell you they're married on the first date, yeah. so that's good. <laughs> really? You've had that? I was like, dude, that's crazy. Um, yeah. Oh my God, it was such a funny situation. Um, I was, <laughs> I was having dinner with. Uh, someone and all of a sudden he just like uh, I'll be right back he just gets up and runs to the bathroom and his phone is on the table and I'm like eating my steak I'm like okay whatever I don't know what's going on he comes back after like 10 minutes he's like oh sorry I think I just saw my girlfriend I'm like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Thanks for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> this steak is great. At least <laughs> 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 everything, everything is an experience, guys. So I'm grateful for everything. I, oh, yeah, too. It, as you should, as you should. But yeah, those game shows are very entertaining and so funny. Wait, I, <laughs> I get it. Love Island is that the one? I, I don't. Like, I don't know. Love I, Island's I, one of them. I, I'll blind. see it and it'll you know it'll play that little clip. Is blind. Ooh, that, yeah, there, yeah. There. That's what she was just talking about. But this is what I like about it because. They just get to know each other through a wall, and then the first time they see each other, it's like they're either attracted to each other or they're not. And then yeah. they have to go. You guys have seen the show, right? I've yeah. seen that. My wife was so watching. So silly, no. but so good. But that's what I'm saying, though. It's like, it, you know, there, the entertainment factor is definitely there. Mm -hmm. But then you look at, okay, how does that ripple effect into? What's what are the consequences? I don't know. Maybe that's just how my mind works. Consequences no, with society are. watching it, or consequences with that relationship on TV. No, 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 with society watching it, because now you can see it's, it's a trend. Everything becomes a trend. Yeah. So it's not just that one show, but then there's another show that's going to borrow it and just call it something else. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's, it's just cyclical where you'll date, 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 and like, boom. Like, when there's a fight or the first sign of this might not work out, let's go to the next person. Yeah. And versus when do you actually sit down and try to work it out? Like, I, I feel like that that stamina isn't there anymore. No. It also doesn't make good TV. Yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. It's so not entertaining. Let's, I find, let's sit through this. Let's figure yeah, this I, out. I, I find myself watching these shows, right, and it's like, oh, yeah, at the end of it, they can propose. I'm like, oh, when are you going to meet the parents? When are you going to go in the real world? When, when are you going to find out if you're compatible? Yeah. And they actually said there was like, um, 
I think my wife was reading some book or something about the bachelor bachelorette. I was just and about when those women cry, she said those producers ask those really pressing questions right before the interview. Mm. And they kind of, if I remember correctly, they kind of tell them these things to like break them down to the yeah. point of where like when they're crying, that's like real, like. That's good television. I mean, and that's yeah. what yeah, really? actors in general do. They tell themselves the same thing to portray a certain emotion. Like Hollywood's pretty, pretty crazy, and I know a lot of actors. But going back to The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, I knew someone who was actually on there. She went to high school with me. And just the whole concept of it in general, meeting someone fairly quickly, giving them the rose and not giving them the rose. and You know how they would spend the night with them? When my friend said, you know they sleep with every one of them, I was, it shocked me. Oh my gosh. It's, and they're like, you have to be sexually compatible. And I was like, that's a good point. Before they so they're in the room. What are they doing back there? Yeah. <laughs> they're playing Monopoly. That must be a great conversation because yeah. they kick the cameras yeah. out. But Man. think about it. It's all about... <laughs> they must be revealing some dark secrets and they don't want the cameras in there. <laughs> but what's interesting is, sure, it's probably the greatest form of entertainment for so many people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why people consume a lot of their time. And it brings me back to your... $24, 24, 24 per hours, day, yeah, yeah. you know? Think about how many people watch shows like that hourly and mm -hmm. it's ruining us. I, yes. I've said this to Angelo and many people before, social media is the devil. You can say the same about TV, but social media really is. I'm anti-technology as much as I, like, worked in IT and created so, Says the guy that's making an app right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's funny. Yeah, that's yeah, so yeah. funny. <laughs> but uh, it can sway so many people and, and actually feed into what you think you believe, mm -hmm. you know, for a lot Ooh. of things. Uh, Instagram that's is it. a very smart and difficult one because it is so good at kind of taking what you like, what you laugh at, how long you're on a screen for a certain reel, and it thinks, let me find Keep the feeding. best thing. And yeah. you know what? They could even let me, let me sell kind of... Sell you some things. Not, yeah, yeah, sell you some things, but mainly sell you ideas and visions and mm -hmm. views that aren't even yours. Yeah. But it mm. kind of looks like yours, right? It's mm -hmm. about working out this and that, yeah. but it turns yeah. into, you know. I always wondered why... There's like tens of millions of people that tune into The Bachelor every week. <laughs> yeah, of course. And uh, my wife used to follow it. And at one point she went with her aunt to like this pizza place that like on, on Thursdays or whatever, like they show The, the Bachelor. Mm -hmm. I'm like, cool. So it's this whole, it's, it's a huge thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I find myself thinking now in my brain, like how many of the people that watch that show have terrible love lives or are, are not good mm. lovers and they just watch it to escape. There's no way to know that. Social media is an escape. Trash TV yeah. is an escape. By the yeah. way, there's another show called The Ultimatum and it's usually for couples who have hit a plateau and they either, you know, they're not in or out. They're like still in that doorway and one of the partners is saying, hey, are we going to get married and continue with this life or do you want to break up? Mm. Have you seen that? They also yeah. like... I've heard of the show. What a good name for the show. The, the Ultimatum. Ultimatum. Yeah. Mm. So that's really interesting because it does like test out the couples and a lot of them do end up marrying together or break, yeah, some of them do break up, but it, it's a good way to put it to the test. Like can mm -hmm. your relationship really sustain? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's but also yeah. fine to do that in a private conversation where you give the other one an ultimatum and you yeah. have a conversation about no, it rather than that. in front of the world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get paid it, for it. Let's just <laughs> marriage is such an intimate, important thing, but people are, Quick to display it on television, or you know, so it all depends on what you value. And you know, I don't think it's that terrible that it's this, on TV. This but. is David's viewpoint. Mm -hmm. If your marriage isn't the greatest, you shouldn't be watching shows no, about no. dating. That's, you should be using that oh. time to invest in your marriage. Uh, oh, yeah. Don't watch someone else fall in love sure. as as your relationship is. It could is, also give you ideas to make your marriage better, though. So could a five-second Google search, you know? Nobody but the, these shows are like two hours, you know? Well, Google will give you an overload of information for so many things. Uh, it, it's it's tough. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I feel like these shows. Yeah, I feel like these shows they end up, you know, or coffee, kind of skewing the the viewpoints of the public because now you have you know all these individuals that are you know just hooking up, 
on these shows. And well, that's how you go about, you know, showing that a relationship is either going to be good or bad. You mm. know? Uh, and then, you know, you have the kids watching this, these kind of shows as well. You know, that, that's what a relationship's all about, the physicality. You know, that they barely talk, but when they do talk, you know, there's, you know, drama. Um, so if my relationship isn't filled with drama, then I don't have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, now they're going out and they're exploring these things, and you just see relationships have taken, like, an extreme plummet. Like, you don't see, like, a, a valid relationship anymore, really. If you're not providing for me, you know, the things that I expect, so sexually, um, if I'm not getting sex every day, then my relationship is not valid and I need to find somebody that will give me that. If you're not going to give it to me, somebody else will, mm. you know, so on. And this is just what you see on TV. Sure. So now they're carrying it out in re uh, regular life and now they're like extreme depression is on the rise because mm. I can't connect with anybody. You haven't taken the time out to get to know anyone. Mm. You know, all you're exploring is these things that you see on TV and it's not real. No. So I have a follow-up question for you guys because uh, in a lot of long-term relationships, the physicality obviously fizzles. So how do you keep this magic alive? I flexibility. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back. We, we we talked about this. We touched base a little bit. You know, when I look at how do you how do you fall in love with God when you read the Bible, right? It's a, or, you know, without reading the Bible, it's like you, you can't fall in love with the author. Or, I mean, with, with the book, if you don't know the author. So it's like the same thing with your spouse. It's like, how can you, when, when you took a vow, when you took a covenant, you didn't do it to your spouse. You did it before God, first and foremost. And then you took the same oath towards your wife, towards your husband. But it was in sickness and health in good times and in bad times. People just want to, they think that, oh, even at 80, we're going to have the same thing happening what we had in our 20s. And it's like, that's not the case. But when you truly start falling in love with the person and you get to know that person inside out, that's what keeps you going. I feel like, you know, I'm not speaking generally because I get it. You know, there's people that are, you know, very, how to say it, like, sexually motivated or whatever they need that crave or whatever so they need to get that but then at the same time like you said the devil can sometimes throw a curveball at you that something happens to the other partner that they might not be able to offer you that mm -hmm. it was great in the beginning but now what do you just you know peace out it was good while it lasted and i'm gonna go find something else or is your marriage based on loving each other and then because we love each other then our intimate life it's different or you know it's like just becomes man i'm telling you it's uh, i know it's a little bit too personal but having sex outside of marriage and having sex in marriage i've never understood it up until like i actually had that and mm -hmm. i'm like the the intimacy and the level of love sex was just completely different yeah and i was like oh my goodness and you i don't think you could have that outside of it hmm. because it's it's such a god is in, intentional about everything and he created that for marriage however obviously we're all humans we make mistakes and Sometimes I feel like, I know I'm, I'm not everybody's going to agree, but sometimes I feel, again, looking at my life, it's good to have that experience, that point of comparison, because how can you know how good it is when you know how bad it was, mm -hmm. or vice versa? So I just feel that when all that fizzles away, it's what does remain. So what was the core? What was the substance? What was the foundation that you guys built on? Was it sexual? Well, then, yeah, when that's gone, then what else do you have? But when it's that emotional intimacy, you know, not only from the heart, but in, you know, you connect with that person. Sometimes you just got to look at her and be like, man, I just want to punch you in the face. <laughs> but I love you so much. <laughs> Bro, I was not expecting that. <laughs> but you got a romantic, you like, sometimes to. you look at her yeah, like... Yeah, but you have... But you, mm, but, girl, but I want to like, check hey, you in the face, bro. I'm saying, like, you would not want to do life without anybody but that. Because you have that comfortability that you know it's like, that's... 
that's that's your that's your rock. Mm. Yeah. Outside, Absolutely. obviously, you know, besides God, like that's the person that God took, man, and it was so intentional that He took the time to design that person specifically for you. Not only that, but to bring it into existence at the same time that you are living. Mm. And then at the same time, just like, here you go. Mm. So do you it's think, beautiful. and I'll, I'll answer your question, but do you think 50% of couples get it wrong then, considering the divorce rate in this country? I feel that we mm. all come in with certain expectations, and when that's not met, then we just easily, and I'm saying this as a man, right? We just easily give up. Be like, ah, you know what, forget it. Like, I'm not gonna be putting all of that intention. But then it's like, if you look at a project car, right? You're gonna spend that time. You're gonna look at that clunker and you're gonna be like, I'm already seeing the vision, like how it's gonna look. It could be beautiful. But we don't go with that intention or with that mindset into our marriage that, man, my marriage, we're two different Ooh. people, two different mindsets coming together. Hmm. It's bound to be some sparks. It's bound to be some clashing or whatever, but we're just literally dipping our feet in the water right now. Mm. We're finding out about each other, like what takes us, what moves us, what, you know, what, what what's our passion or, you know, compatibilities, all of this. And it's like, there's sometimes you got to compromise. Sometimes she has to compromise. Sometimes you both together have to compromise and find that common ground. But that's what I'm saying. Like our inability to see that person for the truly the gift that she actually is mm. or that he is. Because mm. wow. God is intentional, like I said. And it's like, if you saw that person and you wanted to marry her or him, obviously you saw something. You saw the end result for that split second because you wanted to make that decision. Mm. But then once we get into it, we forget that, that, I guess, that beauty that can come out of it. Mm. We're just like, ah, you know, it's a little dusty right now. It's a little rough around the edges, but I, don't, I just don't have the time to Polish put that. It. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. And to answer your question, I've, we've been married almost three years now, but I've known my wife for seven, and lately, I don't, I don't know. It's always been the experience. Hey, I've never done this. Do you want to do that? Sure, mm. okay, fine, let's, let, let's do that. You know, put in the time, and then either you both like it, one person doesn't like it, but then you know. And, you know, just trying to, trying new things, just, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. It's, um, I had a coworker <laughs> tell me a long time ago, and he said, you know, going on a date once a week is cheaper than a divorce. Mm -hmm. At first I was, I kind of laughed at it, and he was like, no, he's actually right. You also have to put time into that. So mm. from your $24, you got to, you gotta throw some time into there, mm -hmm. and and that's that's the best way. New experiences, trying like, hey, uh, you know, you know, we're gonna go on vacation. Where do we go? Well, instead of trying the place we normally go to, let's try something new. Mm -hmm. You know, we did that this summer, and honestly, it was like, it was an amazing experience, but our relationship got so much better. Mm. I can attest to that. Gotcha. I can see that. Yeah, like, I don't know, we, we were gone for like three weeks and, you know, we went throughout Europe and sometimes it was stressful. We were stuck on the tarmac in the plane for three hours, you know, but we were just chill about it. I'd lose my mind. Dude, yeah. I don't, you know. <laughs> or, or trying to get to a place that none of us are familiar with, you know, like, hey, you got to do this, you got to help me with this, mm -hmm. you know, it, but we got through it and, you know, made the best of it. Legit. I, I was going to say along the same lines that dating your partner is a must because while you're dating, you know, even after 10, 20 years of marriage, you're going to end up seeing all the ways that that person has changed and then the, the ways that you can go about being either supportive or where it is that you all differ in your mindset mm -hmm. now in mm -hmm. your current you know place. So taking that time out to actually get to know that individual, because it, especially if you have kids like super early in your marriage, um, Essentially, your, your marriage is going to be based on how you go about providing for your kids, you know, the, everything you're trying to instill in them while they get pushed out into the world. And then after they get pushed out, it's like, all right, where do we go now? Because I, I don't know the person that I'm with mm. because I've only known them as the, the mm. provider and whatnot for my kids. So that I have to relearn who my spouse is. Mm -hmm. you know? um, That's so good. And dating never stops. 
just because you're married, that doesn't mean you're not dating anymore. The dating should continue, mm -hmm. you know, until death do you part. Absolutely. That was definitely a, a working point for me yeah. because it was like, especially when I was heavy into the entrepreneurship stuff. Um, I mean, Jason, when we were doing like modern fitness, like we, we were logging like 100 hour weeks, hmm. you know, and it was like we were putting in time into that thing. And it was always I was that man where I'm like, OK, once I reach a certain income and I can be a provider that will overflow into my marriage. Like, that'll finally fix it. I'll yeah. fix it when I get later, exactly. right? I don't mind breaking it now, and I'll fix it later. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were times where that potentially was never going to even be there because mm -hmm. I, I was just so focused on this one thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though my intentions were right to be a provider, like, you, you also have to, to slow down at times and make sure, like, you know, uh, you're going in the right direction. It's like you're laying bricks, right? You, if you keep your head down and just brick after brick after brick after brick, and you don't look up every now and then to make sure that path is where you're trying to make it, that thing will be crooked. So it's like, you know, I've said it before where you, you, uh, you plan for the long term, but you operate in the short term. Mm -hmm. Well, you got to take action today, take accountability now, mm -hmm. but also take the time to look up, make sure you, you're still going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is something, you know, I, it's like, I can do that in business. I can do that in all these different aspects in my life. Why aren't I doing that in my marriage? Mm. Well, Your business like will be there tomorrow. <coughs> Your spouse. I feel like you said this to me, Angelo, back during Modern Fitness when we were doing all that time and countless nights. You were talking about how to be with someone who's an entrepreneur is just a different life, right? Because they are constantly on their laptop, on their phone, falling asleep and waking up yeah. to their laptop. And it's, yeah. it's, it's a crazy thing in a different life, you know, not for the average person. But I forgot who you were talking about, but you said, wow, this guy's got a business. He's got kids, family life. They all do sports and he works out. This guy's definitely doing it in a way that you couldn't, but now you are. Mm -hmm. But it's such well, an interesting thing that tough it trick. takes... Uh, more than just the business, it takes the, the family life and then the faith that kind of completes a lot. That drives everything. It drives everything. Yeah. But I remember you saying, I know what someone's doing it because they have the family and the faith. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that too. I do too. And I have the guy exactly, I'm picturing him now. And when you said like that, I'm like, dude, whoa. Like that's it wasn't a like full Andy circle. Frisella, was it? No, no, he doesn't okay. have kids. But yeah, that's. But faith has to be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Because if your family's rooted in faith, they support you, mm -hmm. right? If you're rooted in faith and your business has you that's rooted in faith, what can't we do? Nothing. Everything's mm. possible. Yeah, that's what's interesting. So we worked for a company called Modern Fitness, and the four pillars were fitness, family, freedom, and the last one was faith. Yeah. And going through that whole thing, you know, I'm just this business, entrepreneur, robotic, systematic, tactical person. And I knew the fitness, I knew the uh, financial freedom, I knew the everything but faith. And faith yeah. was such a difficult thing for me. And I just thought, oh, Angelo got this side of the business, you know? Yeah. And now that it's becoming part of just my life journey, things have become not only much easier and much more clear, but the peace I get, the amount of ease I get when working, it's essentially just making things more efficient would be the best way of yeah. it. I think it's a beautiful things. thing because I've seen you operate in all those other three. And the fourth one is you'd always ask me like about these, these faith things. And I'm, I'm like, dude, I'm not perfect. I, I barely know what I'm talking about. But I can share you this and I can try to plant this seed. Mm -hmm. And to see that harvesting now and seeing how like you're putting that more into your life now, it's like, dude, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Just, so just goes back to like, you know, an unexamined life is not worth living. We constantly, like you said, with the brick, you got to constantly look back and see like, am I on the right track? It's like that. Are you self-examining or are you self-absorbed? Hmm. Ooh. You got to be careful with that, though, because we're biased. So sometimes I don't see it. My wife sees it mm -hmm. and she points it out. And it's not always a good thing. It's sure, something sure. maybe I was lying to myself about. Yep. 
Yeah, but, you know, we tend to lie to ourselves about a lot of different things. Yeah. I found a quote that I wrote for this, that, that I recorded real quick. You shouldn't think less of yourself, you should think of yourself less. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. C.K. Lewis. That's great. C.S. C.S. Lewis. Yeah. Oh, is that his cousin? C.S. <laughs> C.K. Lewis. Oh, that's his cousin. That's his cousin. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I love that. And I love how this conversation started and where we are here. Um, you know, for the sake of time, first off, thank you for being on the show. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for coming back. First, I thought, I thought we scared you off for a second. No. Oh, no, he's not coming back no more. Um, and thank you, Kofo. Hey. Thank you, Kofo. Thank, thank you, Kofo. Absolutely. Hey. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but let's do this. How can people connect with you and Kofo? Um, so I do have a Shopify account, so it's um, kofocoffee.com, on Instagram also kofocoffee, and you can find me at, uh, on Instagram also, Coach Natalia321. Coach Natalia. How do you spell Kofo? K-O-F-O. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a QR code on this little thing. I'll Absolutely. give you guys stickers so you can put it all over your house and laptops. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. For sure. Easy well, as my billboard. Yeah. Uh, I, I appreciate you being on the show. You, you fit right in. You added your, your insights, and we loved asking you questions, and you answered them great. Um, we're going to have you back if you're down. I'd love that. We definitely, we definitely got to have some more questions and uh, have some other conversations going moving forward. Uh, but again, thank you for being on the show. You guys make sure you check out Kofo Coffee. We'll put the information in the link below. Um, and if I don't know how to do that, I'm going to ask David to make sure you can. <laughs> I probably don't even know how to do that. I don't know why I said that. But thanks for checking us out. That's one year of, of Operation Redwood. And I can't God has been so good to us, and I can't believe it's been a year already, how fast that's gone. And I'm excited to see where he takes us this next year. And this is just still just the tip of the iceberg, and I'm, I believe that there's bigger, greater things that are, that are going to come from this. So I appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys next week. And on that note, Redwood out. Later, guys.